and this is episode 259 of the e-commerce coffee break podcast today andrew rutnick founder at goodsubscription.agency joins me on the show and we discuss how to scale your subscription sales in 2024 so let's dive right into it but before we get started a big thank you to our sponsors for supporting today's episode have you heard about partner hero they're experts in support on the e-commerce industry, known for their outstanding team-building skills. Their main pillars, quality, people, and culture makes them a great fit for your company. Learn more on partnerhero.com or click the link in the show notes. Are you feeling overwhelmed by marketing stress? Say goodbye to pressure and meet your new secret weapon, a remote marketing assistant. Easily scale up your business, boost productivity, and reclaim your time. The game changer? Get your own marketing wizard at half the cost. Visit smart-ecommerce-marketing.com and discover the magic. Check out the link in the show notes now. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about subscription and uh, what subscription can mean for your business, specifically looking into 2024. With me on the show today as a guest, I have Andrew Rutnick. He is the founder of goodsubscription.agency. And after his introduction to e-commerce at Bold Commerce in 2018, Andrew started his own Shopify agency, Good Subscription Agency. They're focusing on helping brands grow their recurring revenues since they have helped brands like See to Table, Rizzi Home, and Dwell differently migrate Shopify apps, improve conversions, grow their CLV, and reduce subscription churn. Subscription churn. His team has also since launched their own complementary subscription app, Good Subscription Upsell, out of the Shopify store app. So we want to talk about this a little bit as well. So let's welcome Andrew to the show. Hi, how are you today? I'm very good, Klaus. Thanks for such a nice intro. Let's start from scratch. Why should I bother about subscriptions at all in my business? Give me an idea. Yeah, the big reason for focusing on recurring revenue. Whenever we say recurring revenue, people just get this weird hypothetical idea of like, oh, this is cool. But really what we're talking about is focusing on repeat customer. And if you think about just basic business and business basics, your repeat customers are your most profitable, most loyal customers. So the reason why you want to focus on recurring revenue or launch some kind of a recurring revenue or subscription program is for two main reasons. First of all, the repeat customers have higher lifetime value, which means they're more profitable. The subscription customer in general, whenever we look at the brands we work with being in Shopify Plus brands or non-Shopify Plus brands, a very common thing you see is subscribers are worth on average two or three times more than non-subscribers. So that gives you an idea of this and profit obviously is the growth engine of your business. That's number one reason. The second reason is if you have higher lifetime values for customers, you can bid more on ads and you can be more aggressive in customer acquisition. So now customer acquisition costs are, have been steadily going up since basically since the beginning of the pandemic, since iOS 14, or is it 4, 13, 12? I can't remember. Apple changes. So having subscription customers allows you to be more aggressive there and fundamentally be more profitable. Grow, they allow me to so. To put it more succinctly, subscription customers allow you to grow faster and more profitably, period. No, makes perfect sense. Now, as a business owner who potentially has no subscription model in their e-commerce business right now, how do I find out if subscription actually fits my brand or my product? What kind of variations or options do I have as a business owner? Yeah. I'm not going to be one of those people that says subscriptions are a great fit for every business. It's like if you're a coffin seller, that's not probably not a great example for you, but if, uh, generally speaking, if you have a consumable product or if you see a recur a benefits in recurring use of your product, those are pretty good no-brainers. One, if you wanted a harder stat, uh, if you look at your returning customer rate over 90 days, Shopify does that pretty easily in your in the, uh, Shopify analytics. And if it's anywhere above 30, 40%, you know that you have a pretty good product that is purchased uh, on a recurring basis already. And the fun fact is, for example, if you don't have a subscription program and you look at the customer cohorts and the people that buy products repeatedly, they probably, even if you don't have a subscription program yet, some people have been buying your product for years and they've been spending thousands of dollars with your brand 
Where on the other hand, some people have bought your product once and they never came back. The goal here is to understand who these repeat purchasers are. Why are they buying? Why did they buy in the first place? And why do they keep buying over and over and over? That is really the key is understanding that ideal subscriber persona. And we can talk about that in a little bit because we do a ton of research surveys and full goal follow-ups and building a kind of psychographic persona and really adjusting the whole business to work with that. So basically what you're saying is before you start a subscription model or add a subscription app, and there are a few of them out there, to your Shopify store, do your homework and, and really find out where is the focus in your business or who is the right audience within your business. Is that right? Yeah. Now, the, the biggest problem that I hear, hear from merchants that have started it and have invested it in that start is that the churn rate is very high. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest risk. Tell me a little bit about churn rates. Yeah. Two big ways to think about subscriptions once you launch is you have two real ends of this funnel. You have customer acquisition, customer retention. To talk about churn specifically, in my mind, good retention is really what we're aiming for. What we're really aiming for is trying to help people to place not just one order, but two, three, four, five, ten over their lifetimes. The basics of good of good retention strategy, in my mind, it's like you have to, first of all, start to think of it as a relation. So whenever somebody buys, signs up for a subscription, they're agreeing to, they're allowing you to charge a credit card at will. As long as obviously you give them a heads up and as long as they keep liking the product. In a relationship like that, it has to be like set up as a long-term relationship from the get-go. So to me, really, there's three pillars of that. And that is transparency, flexibility, and occasional pampering. So like any good long-term relationship. Fundamentally, what does that really come down to? It comes down to transparency and when they're going to get charged, what they're going to get. So upcoming orders mm -hmm. is really important. Access, easy uh, access to the customer portal is really important. Doing post-purchase surveys of how did you find this experience is anything you can do, really important. So asking for feedback, uh, that's actually one of the biggest differences between brands who are growing in subscriptions and have been tapered off or uh, are losing subscribers is they're constantly looking for customer feedback. One great brand that does this really well is John Roman over at Battlebox. The way they do so Battlebox is a monthly survival gear box. So if you think about it, they send you a, a box of survival tools of knives and matches and waterproof gloves and all that kind of stuff every single month. And you'd think turn might be crazy. The good thing for John and what they do is they're extremely hungry for customer feedback. So they have customer groups, they have community where Facebook community where people, diehard audience uh, members are there and they're providing feedback on every month's box. And they do a Facebook live event every month asking for feet for live feed. So that's really like, and really gutsy of them, but it really shows that they have a really close ear to the ground when it comes to taking feedback and making sure that, hey, if you didn't like this month's box, if you didn't like your first box or second box or third box or 10th box, here's what we're doing about that. And also piping up the next box too, um, things of that nature. In my mind, so yeah, churn really comes down to those three things. With the, the unfortunate thing, but when you look at some stats is that the number one reason for most brands for churn is I have too much stuff. So when I have too, and this comes back to our, to my three points and second point of flexibility. When you have too much stuff, that's not a reason to cancel a subscription. That's a reason to reschedule an order, to pause a subscription, to delay, to snooze. And your job as a brand is to, through your subscriber onboarding, through, through emails, unboxing experience, to train them on every reason that's better than cancel. And that's fundamentally like bypassing the number one churn cause for most people. There's also really good tools to give you even more insights into why people are churned. So I would pay, so fundamentally pay attention to, to cancellation reasons and be proactive about them because churn has this really weird mental space where we think about churn as a really abstract number, same kind of as MRR or recurring revenue. But if you think about churn as money, basically, instead of thinking about churn, you think about customer lifetime value. How do we get a person to complete their third order or the fourth order instead of how do we get them to stop it? How do we prevent them from canceling? So you have to still think about every single purchase they make as a purchase you have to either convince them of or remind them why they signed up in the first place. And now a quick break to thank the sponsors of today's episode. 
As a prominent player in the e-commerce support arena, Partner Hero specializes in delivering personalized customer experience solutions. With a clear focus on helping you not just meet but exceed your goals and requirements, they have become experts in e-commerce support. Their commitment to tailoring solutions to your unique needs ensures that your support experience is nothing short of exceptional. Partner Hero is more than a CX company. They are your partner in success. Visit their website and learn more on partnerhero.com. Are you feeling overwhelmed by marketing stress? Say goodbye to pressure and meet your new secret weapon, a remote marketing assistant. Easily scale up your business, boost productivity and reclaim your time. The game changer? Get your own marketing wizard at half the cost. Visit smart-ecommerce-marketing.com and discover the magic. Check out the link in the show notes now. Now, I like the approach to build a community around your subscription. I have seen this with, I'm not sure if that's the guy that I saw, but they're doing it quite well with curated boxes where they basically every month you get a box with different things mm -hmm. that might work for some businesses, not for others. But I think to build a kind of membership community idea around it and keep people in the loop definitely will help to lower your churn rate. When you are building up your subscription, what kind of steps as a merchant do I need to go through to really get it settled in and get started? Because it's, it's a bit of a process. You're not starting from today and then tomorrow I have a, a, a nicely working subscription program. How does that work? Yeah. The basic steps is you have to have a good consumable product. Let's say you have that in spades. Let's say you have coffee or supplements or something like that. Or you're building a membership that is a monthly membership and it's accessed either to digital content. We've done setups for publication magazines before too, where it's like, hey, here's weekly content that you get and you just pay $5, $10 a month. So there's another aspect to that, but let's say you have the content, you have the product. The next step is if you're starting from scratch is you need a good subscription app. And that's not a plug just for our app. That's a plug for all of the great subscription apps out there. There's about 30 different way, 30 different apps on the store right now. Last time I checked and it's a really hazy way or there's a lot of different options. Now we're really seeing apps really competing seriously on really great acquisition features and retention features. And there's been a ton of new apps, but also new apps, for example, on the app store, like Loop or Skio or Smarter or Stay Atomic. All of these have been really good up and coming apps that have really put the fire to the heels of the incumbent, which is Recharge, as well as Bold subscriptions. Recharge has really been stepping up over the last, I'd say, 12 months with the feature parity and trying to keep up with a lot of these small, hungry startups that are just fighting recharge and a lot of, but all of those are really good options. Honestly, I would suggest like with any purchase of any sort of software tool, do your research. Don't go with the first one. Don't go with the first salesperson you talk to. Install at least, install three and see what's actually going to be a good fit for your brand and for your subscription program. Look at their, the flexibility of their subscribe and save or the prepaid options. Can you promote and sell? Can you acquire in the way you need to acquire your customers? If you're a supplement brand, do they have a robust subscription program with flexible uh, discounts? And maybe you want to discount on the third order on, and, and make discount even more on the 10th order. For example, your membership, do they have good prepayment options where you can just upsell somebody to prepay for a year really easily? On the retention side, do they have good churn analytics? Do they have good credit card dunning, churn, churn prevention funnels and churn promotions? So that a personalized now, this is a really cool thing that I've, I've seen more and more of through, from apps. I'll shout out loop subscriptions while on having personalized cancellation offers, for example, upcoming order offers and cancellation offers. So if uh, you're canceling an order four, you have the order five coming up, you will have different cancellation promotions. Like, Hey, you've been with us for four orders and you're subscribed to this product. Actually, get this product with this free bonus product. If you just stick around for another month and you can do that. They're like now you have a lot of like really cool personalization logic built into these apps out of the box, which is really, really neat. And I think there exactly is the problem because as a normal version, you have a million things on your plate and it seems subscription to set it up the right way is not that easy. So I reckon with good subscription agency, with your company, you're helping versions with that. Tell me a little bit more about that. It's part of the services we provide. We do Shopify design. We do Shopify subscription app matchmaking setup. We help with setting up email flows and onboarding for new subscriber joins. And then here's a sequence of four to six emails to train them on your mission, how to make the most sort of a product, how to use the subscription portal well, 
how to get a hold of FAQ, support, upsell them on the next upcoming order, remind them of the upcoming order. So we do all of those services. People can check us out, goodsubscription.agency. Basically, that's what, what we do. We specialize exclusively on working with subscription brands. We've been doing that since 2020. We're specialists. You pay premium, but we give you reliable results. So definitely plot. Thanks for giving me, uh, letting me tweet that it. No, definitely. Being on, asking on that, who's your perfect customer to? What kind of niches, verticals, industries do you work most with? We work with any brand on Shopify that wants to sell or are already selling subscriptions. Our ideal customer is generally somebody who's probably who's probably a little more established. I'd say they probably set up subscriptions already, although we will help with some like starter stores and with some basic setup. We have pretty like approachable pricing. The most impact I'd say is brands that are, let's say, already selling subscriptions. Maybe they have a couple thousand subscribers. We come in to say, and they hit a plateau. There's like, okay, we're not really acquiring anybody. We're losing as many as we're subscribers a month as we're getting. We've gotten here with whatever tools we've got, or like, you know what, it's time to rethink our subscription app, or it's time to really ramp up our uh, conversion funnel. And that's really where we come in. I think that's a very common thing that people pump money into marketing to get people into subscriptions and the churn rate is so high that they basically lose them and it's a, they're not really winning. So it's like yours helps there. But you also have a Shopify app I've seen. Uh, what's that about? Yeah. And so uh, we released, like we've been working on subscription pages with store owners for years and really trying to optimize the subscribe and save offer. So what our app allows, it, it's compatible with every other subscription app that you have. And what it allows you is to upsell and promote subscribe and save program over a one-time option really well. So it's like my, my goal is to make, to give store owners that have basically no money, no coding skills or no design skills, easy way to upsell their subscribe and save program on the product page and really make it really easy to make it a no brainer to try subscriptions on their store. Uh, and that's the good subscription upsell app on the app store. And that was fundamentally because of sometimes store owners, like starter small or smallish store owners reach out to us and they're like, they just don't have the budget to really overhaul their subscription sign up design. We needed an easy way for them to just for $20 a month, install an app and, and have all these features just built in and they can just onboard themselves and, and set it all up themselves. And it's really straightforward. And we have seen results where uh, people install our app and their subscription opt-ins quadruple overnight. And it's with simple, uh, I'm not going to say simple tricks, but basically at this point, hundreds of thousands of dollars went into kind of designing this subscribe and say widget that we've done and we split test it on many different brands. There's a couple of things where you have to, on the design that we figured out is you pre-select the subscribe and save option as number one. You put the price of the product into the button so people have to consciously opt out of or opt into the higher price with one-time purchases having simple pop-ups and dynamic promos that explain what you're missing if you're opting into subscribe uh, into one time versus subscribe and save pop-ups that explain cancel any time as well as frequency fl uh, flexibility that kind of thing that's where where our app is focused on but when we're hands-on with brands and we work as an agency one basically our flow and how we help brands how we've helped brands really grow their subscriptions is we start off with ideal subscriber persona definition and research, really trying to align the business to focus on this repeat customer cohort I, I mentioned before. Because you see this often, like you said, Costco or brands will spend a ton of money on acquiring a new person. However, one person sticks around for one order and another person sticks around for 10 to 20 orders. What gives? Who? Why? What's the difference? What we do is when we start with, with brands is we do ideal subscriber persona research. So that includes a survey, phone call follow-ups, as well as user session testing and survey. Like, and you can do this totally on your own. You're like, you don't even have to hire us. But like the survey is to identify your most loyal repeat customers. And you can look at their number of orders that they've placed, the frequency that they, that they place these orders across, how long they've been with the brand. So let's say you identify that out of your 2,000 subscribers, 600 are really making 50% or 60% of your revenue over the course of a lifetime. You're like, okay, so you set up, you send them a survey and fundamentally what you're trying to find is three things, their conversion reason, their engagement reasons, and the retention reason. And it's with simple questions like when signing up for a box, what are you ultimately trying to get done or accomplished? And, custom, and just letting them answer long form, 
customers, your diehard customers will tell you, hey, I signed up because I wanted it fun. Uh, it was fun. It seemed like a fun well, uh, unboxing. It seemed like really useful products. So for example, if it's a monthly or a quarterly box, and it seemed like really good value. Okay. You do the analysis, you buy your own. Those are the three reasons why the, the diehard customers are signing up. They get real, and then you ask them why they keep staying subscribed, as well as what is the biggest reason, or uh, do you remember the first moment you saw value in the subscription or how you've incorporated the subscription into your daily life? So for example, one, this is with a tech box that well, we're working with. We did the survey and we found that ideal customers actually, whenever this box of stuff comes or all of these cool tech toys, Whenever they don't use an item in the tech that comes, they already have somebody in mind that they could re-gift it to. So to them, the value of the box is a no-brainer because it's like, well, it's not just a box for me. If I don't like any of the items, I can just pass them around and just use them as gifts, stocking stuffers and whatever. We found that, oh, that's really important to keeping the customer lifetime value going. So get what? When it comes to onboarding and purchasing. So the purchasing funnel can be adjusted to make sure that those things are apparent And then the onboarding emails, like in the first couple of emails, as well as in the unboxing and the inserts and the leaflets that you give them, it's easily easy to re-gift if you don't like any of the items. And maybe you would even go out of the way and give them a little gift bag or something else, something along the lines of that is branded with BrioBox. And maybe there's a little insert, hey, this comes from BrioBox. And here's a referral code if you want to get your own box. So that's what really happens when you start to prioritize your returning highest profit, returning most loyal customers. And you align your business to acquire more of those and retain more of those. And then you see, oh, sales are will keep rolling in or churns and decrease because we're no longer trying to just John gun blast and get everybody. We're trying to focus specifically on these audiences. And because they're higher customer lifetime value, you can also bid a little higher on the ads and outcompete your competitors. I love that story. And it shows that as a merchant, uh, as a seller, you should not be afraid of contacting your customers and getting as much information as possible. So from time to time, I talk to the merchants and I was like, yeah, I don't really want to bother them and they're not answering my surveys and whatsoever. And, and that's yeah. where I think the brands who are really making big money, having a big advantage that they reach out and really have a good customer understanding. And then they, you come up with things that's like you can re-gift it if you don't need it. That makes you, the buyer, a hero because somebody else will be happy. A great story there. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there a final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Focus on repeat business and focus on good long-term practice. And this is why I like the subscription as a business model is because the incentive to be good and honest and transparent and provide good value to your customers is it like is is so palpable that it, it just incentivizes good business practices. You can't get away with selling crappy products on subscription. You need to be open to feedback. You need to be transparent. That's the way you're going to grow your business. It helps you sleep at night and it also builds a good business in the long term. It's probably not a good idea to build a subscription business for getting Chinese dropshipping products to your customers. It won't work. People are trying to start businesses in all sorts of ways. I get it. People want to try entrepreneurship. I hope that's a simple step that they get past right away. Really difficult to scale a dropshipping business. We don't work with any dropshippers, really, particularly for that reason. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Andre, where can people find out more about you guys? The the best way, if people want to contact me directly, you can find me on LinkedIn, Andre Rudnick, and you could check out our agency and all our agency work at goodsubscription.agency, or just Google Good Subscription Agency. LinkedIn in that, if you already have a subscription, set up what you want, a good way to upsell them that's better than what comes out of the box with a lot of these subscription apps, our good subscription upsell app. You can find that on the app store. I will put the links in the show notes and you just one click away. Andre, thanks so much for your time today. I think that was a really good overview of what subscription can do to your business. And I think if you have a good product, that's the way to go. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for having me on, Klaus. This is a blast. Hey, Klaus here. Thanks for joining me on another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Before you go, I'd like to ask two things from you. First, please help me with the algorithm so I can bring more impactful guests on the show. It will make it also easier for others to discover the podcast. Simply like, comment and subscribe in the app you're using to listen to the podcast and even better if you could leave a rating. Secondly, please take a moment to check out today's episode sponsors. They play a crucial role in keeping the show and our newsletter available to you for free. Thanks again and I catch you in the next episode. Have a good one. Before you leave, don't forget to visit the sponsor of today's episode. 
Are you feeling overwhelmed by marketing stress? Say goodbye to pressure and meet your new secret weapon, a remote marketing assistant. Easily scale up your business, boost productivity and reclaim your time. The game changer? Get your own marketing wizard at half the cost. Visit smart-ecommerce-marketing.com and discover the magic. Check out the link in the show notes now. Have you heard about Partner Hero? They're experts in support on the e-commerce industry, known for their outstanding team-building skills. Their main pillars, quality, people, and culture makes them a great fit for your company. Learn more on partnerhero.com or click the link in the show notes.